Hello, E-Rank, and welcome to another Thursday live Q&A with me, Pam Duffy, and her, Starla Moore. Managed it better this week. Um, we are here live every Thursday, where you can join us from the Facebook group and ask us questions live. Um, if you're joining us from the YouTube channel, there'll be links down below to join in our Facebook group. Awesome. I'm here this week. <laughs> I'm alive. Yeah. Oh, so good to have you back. It's like a hundred times harder running it all by myself. <laughs> I know. I felt so bad because like we we thought that um we thought that our like kitchen construction people would be gone by 3 p.m. We're like, surely they've started like at you know nine o'clock a.m. They there's no way that they'll still be working at three. And they ended up working until like four right when oh. your live stream stops. <laughs> yeah, of course. Was that like actually working through? There, there's a kind of joke in the UK that workmen come at eight or nine in the morning, drink tea till about two in the afternoon, <laughs> and then maybe start work, and then realize they haven't got the stuff they need and go away for a couple hours. Yeah, ours ours went away for about an hour, but it was like two to three that they were gone on their lunch break. And then they got back like right when we were supposed to live stream. And then they only stayed for like an extra hour till, till four. Oh, so like, hey. If you would have just timed this just a little bit better. Yeah. Could have made this happen. But no, they decided to be loud, literally like right up there. So, <laughs> no, um, good. all right, guys, uh, feel free to get your questions in. And if for any reason you're joining us for the first time or you're watching from YouTube, uh, there is a post in the group every Wednesday pinned to the top that Pam makes. That way you can get your questions early in the event that you can't make it to the live stream or if there are time zone differences, you do have the option to leave your comments and we can get to those first. So we did have one question from the comments. Um, it looks like your name is Anique. Anique, uh, are there any E-Rank features or tools that users often misunderstand or misuse? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Similarly, are there any tools or features that users rarely use to their fullest potential? Ooh, there's so many. Yeah, this is a great question. I mean, everyone get your questions in while we're working through this, but I, I think we could take an hour on this one. <laughs> this is such a huge, cool question. And that's another, on the Wednesday questions, and on the Wednesday thread, if you want to ask questions about like anything that might take us a bit longer to research as well, or things for demos that you might like really want to see and stuff, then we can, we've got a bit of time that maybe we could research a little bit for bigger questions. But now live, get in and ask us all your questions. But yeah, I did. I, I have a list of the tools that I've thought of that people misunderstand and i'm sure starla has thought of tons and let us know in the chat as well tools that maybe you've misunderstood or you you don't use to the full potential or anything but i'm gonna dive right in with because this covers something that's happened this week as well so we'll say the in inventory tool in yeah, don't let that be another word i can't say the inventory tool <laughs> <laughs> um which a few of you might have noticed that we removed from your dashboard earlier this week and then a few people contacted us and said they really loved it so we stuck it back but I definitely think that that's one that quite a lot of people maybe either don't understand or don't use to the full potential or perhaps overuse. We have on E-Rank we have a load of really nice to have tools but they're not urgent they're they're just little extras that we've given you and I think the inventory tool kind of counts into that it's just taking the data that we get from Etsy and there's some limitations to that um well the first limitation is depending on your level of subscription depends how many of your listings that we look at so if you only have a free account we only look at your most recent 100 listings so your inventory value will be only on those 100 listings. So there is a limitation that perhaps people aren't always aware of. Um, and the other thing is 
where we get this value. Eatsy gives us this value, but it doesn't include things like variations and stuff. So you might have more items that you're not you're not seeing in the inventory. And of course, if you have listings that are duplicates of things because you're testing stuff, that might artificially inflate it. So the value in the inventory, well, don't use that for any kind of taxable things. It's a nice to have, but I think it's probably a little overused. Yeah, in the US, if, if you are writing off your inventory value, um, I, your inventory value is going to be the cost of the supplies that it was to, to create the items. You cannot write off inventory value on the price that you would charge for the item in your shop. It is the inventory value of the items at cost to you. Um, ob obviously you need to talk to your accountant about it, um, but that's usually a standard when it comes to creating a product-based business. And, and for print on demand, you don't have an inventory value to write off at the end of the year. You don't get to write off what your print on demand supplier is carrying for you, unfortunately, because inventory value is uh, factoring in the potential profit that you could make in the coming years. It's, it's talking about the cost of the supplies that you've used and, you know, your potential to make a return on investment for those supplies. So just be careful. Yeah. I think Brian, covers it <laughs> great as well yeah it's it's not going to be possible to have an a, a one size fits all because all of your shop every person here your shop's different and how you use your shop and how you use your listings are different so yeah if if the tool works for you great but don't overly rely on it um and yeah certainly don't use it for tax purposes or anything important. It's it's just a nice to have. Yeah. Um, other tool that gets misused. I, well, I, I have to address this glaring comment because Linda is asking if I'm on a different planet because because <laughs> I'm I'm bundled up. I'm in a basement right now. So the basement, if if you measure your heat and freedom units, it's about. 72 to 73 degrees down here um so i'm very cold it's always <laughs> I'm, I'm always very cold in the basement um this but it's it's a lot nicer down here than it is up there up there it's very very warm uh it's hotter than the surface of hell here just now yeah. so if you see me slowly <laughs> melting that's the reason why i, I would style a fan some of that air over here <laughs> It says, uh, it says that, oh, it just went up a degree. It says that outside it's 88 here and it is not, today is like the coolest day that we've had. It's going to be in the nineties. Um, yeah. For everyone suffering with summer just now, I'm so sorry for you. Sorry about the sweat. <laughs> um, so other tool that, that gets misused is the, grading system within the listing audit. I see it all the time. People will say, oh, my listings were all Ds. So I went through and I changed the tags and titles of all of my listings. And now they're all A's, but my sales have dropped off. That's not how you use that tool. And, and what we've even noticed is that sometimes your best sellers will have the worst grades and you should still never, ever touch them. The, the grading system is basically just going through a list of Etsy's best practices and trying to see if you have followed them. But it does not gauge if your keywords are good, if they're being searched for. You could get an A grade for keywords that aren't being searched for at all. Um, it's not gauging the success of that listing. And we actually put a warning on the tool after a lot of people were doing that, making those changes. We decided to put a big fat disclaimer right on the tool that says, hey, this listing is selling. Be careful making changes to it. And people still miss that. So <laughs> um, it's a good guide when you're listing something new. When you're when you're adding a brand new listing, just to make sure that you're doing everything that you could possibly do, it's great. When it comes to fixing a listing that has get it, been getting no attention for a couple months, like nobody's paying any attention to it, and you want to refresh it, that might be another time that you use it. But if you've got listings that are selling, it doesn't matter what your grade is because the 
letter grade does not determine the success of the listing or how successful the listing is going to be. So that's the most common one in terms of misuse of a tool that I see. Yeah, that was kind of top of my list as well. Um, how I always think of the, the grade tool is if you had a tool for helping you write a CV, resume, whatever you call it in your country, you would have a tool that might tell you this is where you put your address, this is where you put your qualifications, this is where you put some personal blurb. But you couldn't have a tool that was telling you you're applying for the right job, your qualifications are right for this job. You know, it's just telling you you filled in everything okay. You still have to use other tools in conjunction with that tool. Um, there is a kind of cool thing with the grades that we did. Um, this is one of these things where we find out that people have been using a tool not the way that we thought it should be used. So Anthony does go in and make some changes and try and adapt it. And the listing audit, the grades tool is one of the ones that everyone's working on the hardest. And one thing that has happened is, although we can't look and say if your item will sell because of what you've done in the SEO, we are looking and if a listing has had a lot of sales, you know, your best seller, we're taking that into account in part of the grades as well. So your best listing should not have a very low grade anymore because it doesn't, this is the thing with um, Jason Momoa's CV resume for going for to get a film. Um, is probably not as good as somebody who's just starting out as an actor, you know, not as well filled in. So this is the same. If, you're, if your listing is doing really fine, then it's a Jason Momoa. It's a big star and it can get away with everything not being perfect. Um, but it, it's there. It gives you some low hanging fruit. I would say use it to kind of learn about SEO, to learn about the best practices, how you've got to structure a title and put your keywords in the tags and the title and all that. Um, and once you know how to do it, you can get A's easily. And then I just use it to check, have you messed up anything? Have you put in a silly sell spelling mistake or something? It's just a quick, a quick thing to say, oops, I did a, I did an oopsie. Um, but yeah, it's, again, it's it's one of the ones that if you're spending hours every day on it, you're doing something very wrong. It should just be a quick one. You see a listing with a low visibility that's not doing very well and it's got a lot of it's got a low grade. It's got a lot of SEO tips. That's some low hanging fruit. You can try changing that. That's that's all it is. It's to quickly identify stuff, make a change, get on with your day. Yeah. And Brian. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> We've yes. tried it. We've had this conversation. Um, if if you think that we got quite a few complaints from people when we hid the inventory for two days, you want to see what happened when we hid the <laughs> when we switched off the listing audit for a couple of days. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, people were not happy. We've we've debated different ways to change it, but it's like everything that we've tried to like figure out, we can't just get it perfect. So. We don't know what to do at this point, but apparently people like it how it is. So for a while, it's going to be how it is until we find a better solution. Um, yeah. Another tool, though, that I see people kind of misusing is the the Trend Buzz tool, because you see that top 100 trending products and people go in there and they're like, oh, elephant nursery wall decor is trending. I don't make nursery wall decor, so that's not relevant to me. No. If you see that elephant nursery wall decor is trending, that's a good indicator that if you make birthday party supplies, maybe little kids' elephant birthday parties are trending. Maybe if you make children's clothing, elephants on the clothing will be trending. If you make birth announcements or baby shower invitations, maybe little elephants are something that you should incorporate in because it's the elephant tied to a children's theme that's trending. Um, if you see that pineapple wall art is trending, maybe you start making little pineapple necklaces. Um, there's there's so many ways to take the trends that you're seeing and to tie them into your current product line. You don't necessarily have to make the item 
that's trending. Use it as a springboard for other ideas. Exactly. It's it's the start of your journey in, in the research. Um, and it's something, if you check every so often, if, if you give it a quick glance every day or every week or something, you get an idea of the things that are trending. And it, it makes it so much easier to find those superstar keywords. Um, both myself and Starla have done like tutorials, live videos, all sorts of things where we've gone and looked for keywords. And we're able to find fantastic keywords with, you know, low competition and high searches because we've just kept our finger on the pulse of seeing what's popular. Um, one one way we did it that we did a blog post about a year and a half ago, just using that trend buzz, and it was basically um, I saw that self care kits were really trending and makeup lipstick and things like that was really trending so thought self-care kit what about a homemade lipstick or a homemade lip balm kit search for that and saw that that was starting to trend in the keyword tool so we were able to say hey come on you know this is maybe a real good potential and I did hear back from some people who had followed that advice it was relevant for their shop they started to make something like that and they did really well it's just thinking and going okay yeah if people are liking elephants if people are liking self-care things if people are liking diy how can i combine that into something absolutely and and it's that is the trend buzz seeing crustacean core etsy seems to think it's hot at the moment crustacean core is that like cottage core but it's like when you look at the side of like an old ship and it's covered with little <laughs> urchins and I can totally see that. Um, I know Pinterest was talking about um, bioluminescence is a really big thing, which is like the underwater glowing yeah. fish and things. So are we not seeing crustacean core? It's a possibility that could come up. But a lot of these core things, um, Jan keeps on messaging me about goblin core. That looks like it might be a thing at some point. Um, <laughs> and it certainly seems very interesting. Well, it's it might end up being a self-fulfilling prophecy because if Etsy's saying that it's trending, because right now it's not, there's no data available for the term. So, but it um, might, yes. Um, I'm checking keyword yeah it's not in the keyword explorer or the keyword tool i'm not seeing any data but double check it hold on a minute i'm not seeing anything on pinterest either which is where you would expect all these core things go through pinterest often reddit as well so just give it some time it might be a cool trend to if you know you wanted to jump on the trend and try to list something, um, you you could be an early adopter. And maybe if Etsy starts talking about it, because I'm only seeing 44 listings. Let me see if there's any more listings using the term. Um, it might be one of those things that you are one of the first people to create products using the term. And yeah, there's 236 results. So that's not very many listings at all for an Etsy search. Yeah. I would say that if Etsy's talking about it right now, experiment with those keywords and then let them sit throughout the holiday season. Yep. Um, and I'm seeing, is this Sharon? Um, I can't see who this, oh, oh, I have a crab necklace. So this, you see crustacean core. It's oh, Linda. this is trending. <laughs> so you see, I have... I have something, I have a crab necklace. So think about what other things that can go into. What else is trending? Well, that's like beachy vibes, you know, summer necklaces as well. So there's a lot of things it could hit into. I was trying to have a look on E-Rank, but my, I wasn't logged in. <laughs> Here's the thing. Um, Good Morning America, six days ago, said, according to Etsy, crustacean core is going viral. People are searching Etsy for lobster prints. 112% more than this time last year. So it might not even just be that they're searching crustacean core. They're searching for lobster prints, crab prints. Crazy. And yeah. House and Garden uh, magazine has an article on it. Guys, I would 
jump on this. I see it trending on TikTok. Sounds like a good one. And I just literally went into the trend buzz on E-Rank and the number one just now for the past 30 days is summer jewelry. So <laughs> this is all, all things you can jump in on all of those things with a, certainly with a crab necklace. I think that hits, that hits a few potentials. Absolutely. Yeah. I would, I would optimize I would use, you know, try to jump on that term early just to be an early adopter, but then also more accurately describe what you're selling. Lobster, crab, clamshell, scallop, whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's something. And remember, you can put all these in your description as well now. These are counted in your SEO, but definitely the important thing on your title and tags. But you're talking something along the lines of, a crab necklace is beautiful summer jewelry trending into the um, crustacean core theme. You think of how you can word this into a kind of sentence or something, which is really easy because you're just describing what it is. Absolutely. All right. Carol said, when I post on Instagram, I get multiple comments to hashtag a Etsy something or other. What are key Etsy hashtags? Um, there aren't key ha Etsy hashtags. And hashtags are significantly less important than keyword optimizing your captions. So just like on Etsy, where we talk about writing your descriptions, using relevant keywords in natural sentences, your Instagram captions are working very much the same way. Instagram's uh, CEO recently came out and said that hashtags aren't the big thing. Should you still put them? Yeah. But I wouldn't be targeting Etsy hashtags. I wouldn't be saying, you know, it, it's not going to be as strong as hashtags that are directly related to your target customer because your target customers aren't searching Etsy hashtags. They're not searching for, you know, Etsy seller, Etsy shop. They're searching specific hashtags related to their interests, like crustacean core. For example, if that's a new trend, people are going to be looking for hashtags to get inspired by those things. Um, you could use the hashtag Etsy finds. That's one that people will typically use when they want to share a product that they've purchased on Etsy. They'll use hashtag Etsy finds to show off like hauls, for example. Um, but I would focus more on hashtags related to your industry as opposed to hashtags related to the, the, you know, marketplace that you're selling on. And I would focus significantly more on getting relevant keywords in your actual caption. So keywords that are related to what you want to be known for. I, I've heard time and time again from Instagram, like experts, <laughs> that you should have a main thing that you want to be known for, a set of keywords. So for me, mine would be Etsy coach, right? I want to be known for Etsy coach or Etsy tips, Etsy tools. So if I wanted to be known for like Etsy tips, I make sure that the term Etsy tips is in my Instagram bio. And then I would make sure that I commonly use the term Etsy tips in my description. So maybe like, here's another Etsy tip, you know, Blah, 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 blah. Or if you want to be known for, um, you know, ceramic cottage core mug or just cottage core mug, you could say this cottage core mug will make you feel like you live in an enchanted fairy garden. What type of drink would you put in this cottage core mug? And then they would comment their favorite drink. You know, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but and then you could, after that, put hashtag cottage core, hashtag fairy garden, hashtag. Yeah, don't hashtag stress coffee. about the hashtags. Although I am wondering, you're saying you're getting multiple comments to hashtag and eat see something. Is this random people who are following you trying to give you advice, which is weird? Um, or are they hashtagging their own stuff themselves, which is also weird, but. You, you see it I mean like we see whenever we post something on YouTube someone's I, I got linked to OnlyFans in the comments today oh, we're yeah. having to jump in and go delete 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 so that could just be a thing that's happening on 
Instagram just now that people are trying to hashtag things that you shouldn't be hashtagging. Or or you get all the comments that are like, DM it to Etsy Market, DM it to Etsy Creative Lounge, DM it to... I just blocked all the terms that they commonly use and then they come up with new terms and I got yeah. to change oh, that, um, it sounds like what they used to do on Pinterest where it's it's their own board or their own hashtag and they're trying to get people to join their board like oh stick it here yeah the but... DM it too they're like those Etsy pages that just share Etsy products but you have to pay them money to get featured and then you look at all the comments and they're all like comment farms so yeah. all of the comments are like nice beautiful wow cool they're all just one word lame generic comments that you can tell are not organic they're farmed <laughs> yeah absolutely um oh i had one more tool actually that i just thought of um that is the spotted on Etsy monitor tool yes that's a good one. <laughs> um, We've had a few questions of this in the Facebook group and to the support support at erank.com if you have any trouble. But we've had a few questions on this. And also, this is another tool that based on your feedback for what how people thought it worked, Anthony has made changes to kind of make it work a little bit more that way. Um, but the big, big questions on Spotted on Etsy lately have been, why is it not working? And that is generally if... The Spotted on Etsy monitor tool, you have to put in at least one keyword for it to start looking. You have to tell it, I would like to switch this on. So go into the, I think it's the edit keywords tab on the Spotted on Etsy and enter some keywords and it should start going off and searching. But th this is one that people used to see this and it's hard to know what to name things and people have expectations. So they would see something and they would say, I've had 10 spotted on Etsy today, but my views haven't gone up. What's happened there? Thinking that spotted meant somebody's viewed your item. Where what it is, is it was like a daily rank checker. You put in your keywords and every day it checked where you were ranking for these things. But because it said spotted on Etsy, people thought it meant the customers had found you. So now if you have the Google Analytics, if you have Google Analytics connected to your eRank account, now we do show you in Spotted on Etsy, as well as these times when our, our system has found your items ranking, we also show you that day what keywords people actually found you for through your Google Analytics. So yeah, this was one that people were using wrong. So we were able to adapt it, thankfully, because we've got extra data. So. Awesome. so guys, let us know in chat what tools you don't think you've got the most out of yet or you're confused about or anything. Just let us know in there and hopefully we can we can do an E-Rank Tools thing and not complain about Etsy for a day. That would be awesome. Yeah, we, we can pretty much explain any of the tools that you're struggling with. Oh no, Pam froze. Not again. Okay. Well, while Pam unfreezes herself, it might take a minute. Uh, Victor had said my sales have slowed down so bad. Yeah, it's, it's summer. Um, this is the point in time when we typically see low summer sales. And if you joined Etsy in 2019 to 2021, this is going to feel very, very abnormal when in reality, it's very, very normal. It's going to feel abnormal if you join during that window, because what we were experiencing is what we keep calling the uh, the Etsy pandemic wave, where basically we were experiencing more traffic than usual on Etsy due to the pandemic. We were seeing way more shoppers on the platform because they were home, they were you know, on lockdown, they had stimulus money, and now... Things are going back to what we typically see during the summer on Etsy. Typically during the summer on Etsy, things are slow. People are going on vacation. They're holding on to their money. They're not ready to, to, you know, spend a bunch of money. They are spending time outside. They're going out with family and they're not shopping online. So right now is the time that, you know, everybody's experiencing slow sales, but there's a wave coming. 
there is a wave for the holidays are coming and it is going to hit in just a matter of weeks. You know, we're already starting to see in a lot of industries, things start to pick up a little bit. So don't panic. My advice would be to think about what you need to do to prepare. If you thought that tomorrow, um, like thousand people were going to enter your shop, what are all the things that you haven't done? What are all the things that you've been putting off? What are all the things that you've wanted to do, but you didn't have time? Uh, what are some of the things that you don't know how to do yet, but that you want to do? Have you gotten all your Etsy listing videos in? How are your photos how you want them to be? Do you have products that you have been planning to list that you haven't been able to list? Um, are you marketing on social media yet? Uh, are you creating reels on Instagram, which we have found is the best current source of reaching new people who don't already follow your brand? Um, what are you doing to help your slow sales? And can you start putting those systems in place now so that you're better prepared for when this wave hits? I always see people this time of year who talk about those really slow sales and then the wave hits and they're not prepared for the wave. And because of that, they start falling behind. This is the slow period where we should all be working towards what should be a great holiday for everybody because the holiday season on Etsy is always great. Black Friday is historically Etsy's best day ever. Even if you're not hosting a Black Friday sale, there's going to be more people shopping on the platform. So that they usually on Black Friday, they don't even care if your stuff is on sale. If they're doing all their holiday shopping, they're going to buy whether it's on sale or not. So prepare now. Um, and don't worry so much about the slow sales. Everybody's feeling them right now, but it's only going to be a matter of time before things pick back up. So I kept them busy, Pam. Oh, thank you. Yes. Oh, I, got, <laughs> I have like worst itchy nose ever. So I'm glad that you're back. Now I can like scratch your nose. Yeah. Sadly, I can't be chat anymore. So it's, it's, I'm just here oh, to no. look pretty until the camera freezes again, basically. <laughs> That's okay. I'll keep going. Um, Scott asked, what are your thoughts on the number of listings in a section before you should split into multiple sections? I have a lot of repeat customers. So my main page and sections get a lot of views. Um, it's not even something I've thought of, to be honest. Are they relevant to be in those sections? Um, sections are there to help your customers really so does it help your customers if there's too many then yes they might get lost there so how how could you split it up but otherwise it won't really make much difference yeah just shopability and if they make sense you know if if it was a shop that had necklaces earrings and bracelets I wouldn't split earrings into two different earring sections unless there was a reason to do it. So, yeah, that's um, earrings one and earrings two wouldn't be great, but maybe hoop earrings and stud earrings or something might make sense. Exactly. I know Carol asked about jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> Carol asked, "Will I able to, or will I be able to watch this?" or a recording of this. Yes, you will. It'll be floating around here in the E-Rank group. And it will also um, in the next day or so be posted over on our E-Rank YouTube channel. Let's see. Mindy, why is it so hard to find good keywords for wall decals? I feel like I don't get much from Google Analytics or E-Rank in the matter of star keywords or different kinds of keywords, if that makes sense. Um, maybe don't focus on just the wall decal element maybe try to take a peek into wall decor a wall decal in you know a sense is wall decor you're decorating a wall with it so maybe try to jump into adjacent categories or if you make we'll, we'll keep going with the crustacean core if you make <laughs> big lobster wall decals maybe you do lobster wall art lobster wall decor, wa lobster wall decals, ocean decals. Um, get specific about the type of products that you're creating and see if there's any adjacent keywords that can also lead customers to find your products. Even if they're not necessarily searching for a wall decal, they might be looking for decor and they just don't know that they need a wall decal. Yeah. Um, 
looking at the trend buzz, we've got hot keywords are including wall art, wall decor. Um, I've seen some other relevant ones, room decor. Um, so these are all places to start and you can take these and go into the Keyword Explorer and see what else there is. Um, as we said, we know crustaceans, all things summer are trending. So you can make your own sort of longer tail keywords by looking at what's trending. OK, is it crabs just now? Can I do crab um, wool, wool decals? Qu potentially, you know, quite quite easily. And Eatsy has told us they're working on making the search even more personalized for people. So if someone's been doing a lot of searching for crustacean core um, and been looking at a lot of jewelry based on that, and then they suddenly go and search for wool decor, they're more likely to be shown things that are more featuring this kind of crustacean-y thing. Um, this is only, Eatsy's only the search engine's just kind of learning to do this, so it's little, but it's going to get bigger. So if you see something else is trending, it's it's a way that your things might get seen if people are searching elsewhere for it. So that's a cool difference. Yeah. But the keyword tool is your friend. Um, don't just be looking for exactly what you're searching for. Think of who's going to buy it, what room are they going to put in, How's it going to make them feel? You know, all these kind of different words. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the keyword suggestions list in the keyword tool is the only place I really spend time in the keyword tool. That's all I really look at. So um, Elizabeth had asked, and I know that I know that you can, but Pam, you'll have to be the one to tell her how. She said, I changed my business name recently, but my E-Rank membership shows the old name under my shop section. Will this affect anything in my shop? Um, it won't affect anything in your Etsy shop. It will at the minute. And this is something we're working on E-Rank. But if you change your shop name on Etsy, at the minute in time for E-Rank, you will have to go into your settings page. It's the cog on the top right hand side. Disconnect your shop with the old name and then hit connect another shop and just connect up your shop with a new name. There's just a few tools that are at the minute in time are searching for your shop with the old shop name. Um, so it kind of bugs out a little bit. Um, so, yeah, if you change your shop name at the minute in time, just go into your settings, disconnect and reconnect. It won't make any difference to anything. It is something we're working on, but all these things take time. Amber said crusty core. It was <laughs> it was crustacean core, which is apparently trending according to Google and home and garden magazine and a bunch of other places so guys ride that wave i can see crusty core being a thing um because <laughs> the whole, like we said the goblin core and grunge aesthetic well crusty i don't know if it was with you guys but in the uk crusty was an aesthetic like in the 70s 80s or something i can see that coming back with all this aesthetic. Crusty? So, yeah crusties yes it's kind of what we called the sort of the the hippies out in the protest camps and things i don't think we call them crusties <laughs> <laughs> but i could see crusty core being a thing i i can actually visualize it the kind of tie-dyed pants and like um, <laughs> They get to the man banners and things. They're picking a cool aesthetic, actually. <laughs> I've got, I've got some some family members who, you know, I, I think honestly, when I think about them, they are kind of crusty. So <laughs> it's not necessarily hippies. It's a very specific type of hippie. Yes, <laughs> the ones who, the ones who really enjoy the great outdoors, and they prefer to be there a lot. <laughs> so they, you know, you get a little crusty when you're outside, <laughs> especially we, now when it's this hot. Yeah, you heard it here first. We we made it up between ourselves. <laughs> and said, "I'm going on a lobster hunt." <laughs> <laughs> now I I just want to sit and search on E rank just now. Are you going to search the what was it lobster? 
I'm, I'm doing lobsters. I, I think Christy's going to look a bit bad. Yeah. Oh, actually, lobster is trending on Google just now. That's interesting. Lobsters. <laughs> Not so it? much on Etsy, but it is on Google. Yeah. Ditch cottage core and get on the latest homeware trend that is the perfect accompaniment to the coastal grandma look crustacean core coastal grandma is that a another keyword now i, I got they're just they're just running at a stretch for how they're gonna keep cottage core in with this crustacean look <laughs> coastal grandma actually google searches have shot up as of march and they just keep climbing for coastal grandma Wow, that is a Etsy. Brand. There's like we don't have any data for Etsy, but Google and no data doesn't mean that people aren't searching for it. So coastal decor has shot up though. Yeah. Very interesting. Might be something to take note of, guys. Oh, wow, yeah, that is a huge shoot up in google so yeah guys you heard it here first it's very bizarre maybe i'll maybe i'll make a video about this trend that's shooting up out of nowhere and i'll i'll make like a youtube short about it or something yeah it definitely coastal is growing on etsy so all, all these things so yeah coastal wall art coastal wall decor so for yeah for your wall decals um do do some coastal stuff all right well then maybe i'll uh, i'll work on a on a little short video for everybody talking about it since it's so so popular yeah. Anne asked if crabs are trending i sure hope not <laughs> <laughs> yeah no not quite like that no it's too it's too hot too hot for that. <laughs> Carol um, asked, uh, is there a great place to go for keywords? Carol, that's all we do at EREC. <laughs> yeah. That's that's our whole deal. Yeah, I would say all the other two, honestly, all the other tools on ERANC are nice to have, but it's the keyword tool and the keyword explorer. They're well, all the keyword tools are the big things on ERANC. So yeah, if if you're here, get yourself to erank.com sign up for a free account and dive into the keyword tool um yeah just just have fun with it and if you get stuck on anything ask questions in the facebook group but just basically myself and starla and even anthony in the e-rank youtube channel have some videos on how we use these tools so but yeah put in put in something that describes your listing and then have a look at all the other related keywords that you might possibly use yeah start start as simple as possible when you're doing your search so if you're selling a gold and diamond engagement ring just start by searching engagement ring or even just ring and see what results you get and then maybe narrow it to engagement ring and then maybe narrow it to diamond engagement ring but start broad and then scroll down to the suggestions that we give you on e-rank and you'll be able to find some great ideas absolutely yeah i think as as today is the is the thread about tools e-rank tools that people use wrong i think that is something um keyword tool and keyword explorer are great tools but occasionally people do try and try and search for that very long tail keyword the bronze and was it bronze and opal steampunk engagement ring yeah if you put that into e-rank it's not going to give you a whole lot of results because there are only a couple of listings with that and not many people search for it. So it doesn't have a whole lot of data. But if you were to search for engagement ring and then search for steampunk ring and just see the other related things with that, then that can give you ideas of what people are actually searching for and what other sellers are using. And it can help you identify the right keywords for the thing that you've made or even better, the the main way I like to use these keyword tools is not to take something I've made and try and shoehorn a keyword into it. 
but to see what people are wanting to buy and then finding the keyword and making an item based on the keyword. It's much easier to do it that way around and saves you loads of money. Absolutely. That's what product research is. It's creating a product that fills a need. You got to make sure that someone needs what you're going to make rather than making it and then trying to find someone who needs what you've made already. So, Absolutely. Yes. I mean, it's, we, we all are creative people and we all make things sometimes, but it's much harder to find the people to sell it to when you've already made something that you don't know people want. But if you figure out what people want, and I find it, it's like a great inspiration as well when I'm looking through all these things and I might find something that's trending and then I Google it and go, what is this? I've never even heard of that. And then you get some ideas, you get inspired to make stuff. So it can be really cool. Yeah. Scott has my favorite comment of, of this whole thing so far. He said, oh, I'm a crusty grandpa. Going. So I'll probably trend next month. <laughs> you personally. <coughs> just, yeah, just, just Scott, the crusty grandpa. <laughs> uh, how do you maintain your levels of crust? That's what I want to know. We all would like to be crusty. So we want to know how to strive <laughs> to become no. more crusty. No, I really don't want to become crusty. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm striving to not, but as I, I think, right, if you watch this in YouTube, watch the start of this and watch now for how much more shiny I've become in the past. <laughs> oh, try oh. not to be crusty, but yes, guy, let, let's make Scott the Crusty Grandpa um, trend for next month. Everyone search for that just now. <laughs> <laughs> And said, for the first time in my life, I'm trendy. I have just created some seaside themed wallpaper for my conservatory. Who would have thought? You are <laughs> right on trend. You didn't even know it. I'm sure that wasn't even your plan initially, was it? It just, the stars aligned beautifully. Yeah, well, sometimes if you don't chase the, chase the trends, they come around and find you instead. Yeah. But getting... Getting an idea, you know, following trend year on year and seeing what happens, you can guess that during the summer, ocean, beach, seaside themed things do tend to get a little more popular. So I suppose if we'd seen how great Cottagecore has been for the past couple of years, we might have somehow figured out that there's going to be a Cottagecore granny by the sea. They did the Cottagecore witchy in her... <laughs> <laughs> you know that this is how these trends happen people come up with strange ideas by combining the thread you know combining what the trends are and you know with how popular cottagecore was around christmas i can almost bet we're going to get some nautical christmas trees and things like that this year so if you guys are planning things for the holidays which you know hopefully you guys are planning your your holiday items now because this is the prime time to do it so you can launch it all in time for those crazy shoppers who shop early um i might consider doing a couple you know some sea themed items because i can almost bet that we're gonna see you know like when you go to a store that has all the different decorated trees and they're all in different themes do you have like the big stores with all the different decorated trees oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah I can almost bet that there's going to be some holiday um, see. Yeah. The last year trending on Google was Beachy Christmas. Ooh. And a tiny little jump in Etsy as well. So I, I think that's not a bad idea. And we have to bear in mind that half the planet is in summer at Christmas. So having beach-themed Christmas things is not a bad idea. Wow. There are a lot of um, a lot of different posts about beach themed trees. So yeah. hey, guys, <laughs> hint hint, jump on it. <laughs> yeah, and that's I'm pointing at Stella. I think my camera's flipped. I'm not sure. Um, but that's that's how you figure out trends. You just see what trends every year what's trending just now what random things can happen because you know people 
buy all sorts of nonsense. Some I, I bet all these trends happen because someone in Pinterest has the idea, basically. <laughs> just just like Starla. People are sitting talking about things and go, hey, I want to have crab ornaments on my tree. <laughs> yep. And then they do it and then they talk about it and then their friends are like, oh, that's cool. And then that starts trending. I, I even saw a big thing about like the haggardly sea witch for Halloween. So we might even see like some sea witch themed Halloween decorations this year. That sounds really cool. The, you know, like the, the witch's lighthouse by the ocean. Fun. Yeah, that's, that sounds cool. And actually, it's something I've always wanted to make. A fig we have a Scottish mythical creature called a Kelpie, which is a half horse, half fish. And I've been wanting to make one of them. So it's, a, it's an ocean horse kind of thing. So, yeah, th this might all be trending by the end of the year. Awesome. Okay, we have a good question from Amara. Is that your name? When searching a keyword and scrolling down, is it best to pick the word where the competition is less than 5,000 and then create a product around that? Uh, also, does that word need to be trending in order to be successful? So is it better for the term to be trending? I, I, here's the thing. The trend buzz is going to tell you the top 100 items that are trending on Etsy. That does not mean that those are the only items that are trending because there's tons of things trending on Etsy at all times. I, I would dare say thousands and thousands and thousands of things that are trendy. Um, so it doesn't need to be on the trend buzz, buzz list. I, I would say that it's not necessary to find products that have totally low competition from that list if you're doing keyword research in the keyword tool because those aren't the only keywords you'll likely be using in your listing to get found you're not only if, if you notice that seahorse christmas ornament has 5,000 competition and you want to make some that doesn't mean that you can't make them you could rank for nautical christmas tree decorations rather than see house ornament, there's other keyword opportunities there, but it's a good indicator that, you know, if you see that people are searching that term, that you might have success creating a product like that competition. It's like, it's one of those things that it's not like you see that number of competition and you're going to be at the end of that. You don't list, you're not listing a product and ending up underneath all 5,000 of those people. It just means that it might take a little bit longer to rank higher up in search pages, but it doesn't mean that you're not discoverable. It doesn't mean that you can't make sales. It doesn't mean that no one's going to find you. It doesn't mean that people are only going to pick those competitors. It does mean that you should look at the other competitors who are selling similar items and make sure that your photos especially are just as good as those, if not better. Uh, that your pricing is, you know, it can, your pricing can totally be above everybody else. But if you are listing a single ornament for $100, you better have a good reason and make sure that that reason is clear. Otherwise, people are going to be like, hmm, $100 for a Christmas ornament. I need like a pack of 12 ornaments. So I, I'm not paying 100 for one. You know, you just have to make sure that your pricing aligns well. So. Yep. Um. But we do have a video on eRank showing what I do to look into the keywords. Um, I can't remember what it's called just now. I have posted it in the Facebook group a couple of times. Um, but what what Anthony always says, I'll steal his words, I like, I like stealing his words, is that of the competition, quite a lot of them are not going to be optimized for this term. Um, for certain keywords, you're going to find that because Etsy can match in search for any of the words that you have anywhere in your title tags and a bit on the description, um, there can be people matching or <laughs> showing up as the competition that hadn't necessarily, that wasn't necessarily what their item is. So you're going to be able to beat them and um, there's also people who haven't optimized well they maybe just have they might just have the keyword in their description it's not in their title and tag so you're going to rank higher 
they might have terrible listings. So if your listings have better photos and better price and better descriptions and everything, you're going to rank higher. But um, I don't look at competition as a good or a bad thing. Um, every shop and every listing is going to do differently. And what I tend to do is if you click on the column headers, you can rank it by whatever is on that header. So I will rank it by search volume highest first, because that's the number of people that are searching. And then I will tend to have a look at the competition and see things that are an outlier for being a lower competition than the other things for that kind of search volume because that's starting to tell me a lot of people are looking for this but not many people are making it now whether that not many people you know if you're doing wedding rings you might find that most of the keywords have a competition of half a million but you find one that's got a competition of fifty thousand. that definitely sounds worth at least going for um and you know like starla says if it's what your item is then you're going to have to use that as the keyword, but maybe your superstar keywords that you're you're really hoping to aim for just now, maybe they're slightly different. But don't rule things out. Um, you've got 13 tags you can use, so you can have an experiment with lots of different things. See what works. Um, but the, the simplest way I look at it is you're looking for a keyword that describes your item that has enough people searching for it it doesn't have to be loads it has some people searching for it and at a competition that you can rank and search for and what everyone can rank and search for is slightly different starla has or had unfortunately it's not open for a while but starla had a big successful shop she can probably hit different keywords than your shop can hit or that my shop can hit just because you're your shop quality score is, is different that take that's taken into effect where you can rank as well absolutely and i went ahead and um my video was easy to find i popped my just how i do etsy seo video um but if you go to pam's channel as well just type in pam duffy on youtube and just from her like page search etsy seo all of the videos that she's done on Etsy SEO will all pop up at the same time. So you can also find tons of videos there as well. So just compare how we do ours. I think that Pam and I have pretty much identical keyword, you know, research strategies. There might be a couple variations, but watch them both because sometimes you need to hear things explained different ways before it clicks. Um, and you know if you have to watch them more than once do that too it's it sometimes it takes a couple times before you fully get it so yeah oh i keep forgetting in the facebook group in the guides we do have starless videos there there's i can't say her name properly oh. De deborah engler another fantastic youtuber she shows how she uses e-rank is it hmm? Is it the yes, is it? It? yes, that's it. Um, Brian, he did a post on in the E-Rank group that we saved into that guide and everything as well, because that shows his way of using the keyword tools. Um, so there's a whole load of things there. So um, if you go, you're in the Facebook group, but once this video is over, if you go to the top <laughs> of the Facebook group, you'll see in the guides, um, you'll be able to click through. There's stuff there. Um, I keep forgetting to add more stuff, but it should be a cool way to to save things when I do remember. Yeah. All right. Last question is from Carol. She said, my store is antiques, vintage, rare, and oddities. It's done well, and I love Etsy. Is there a special way to market if it's not handmade? I don't think so. I think that, I think that marketing is marketing across, you know, most platforms. I would say that if, you know, for a handmade shop, Instagram, showing off your items, showing off the benefits of your items, showing off, you know, why people might want to buy your items is good. And if your items are vintage, there's likely a market for those products there as well. Um, targeting the individuals that you feel are your primary demographic for your types of products. Yeah, um, no I've definitely seen like Instagram and other blogs and everything where people sort of do style guides 
talking about how to use their vintage stuff in you know mid-century modern was a big popular thing so if you decorated up a corner of your spare bedroom in a mid-century modern style that happened to have a few of your vintage things in it that you can show you know a lot of people are searching for what's trending what to you know what to make and stuff so you can show them that um another thing you can do if you get a big following on that not only can that link back to your shop but also everything else you've bought if you buy it off amazon or something you can get an amazon affiliate code and get money for people who buy all the other things you're showing as well so you can be a style icon and with vintage as well still do your market research that keyword research is important before you go out and buy stuff and what are people looking for you can have i've seen some great vintage shops that are really have a niche like there was people their entire shop was only um chinese blue and white pottery and that kind of thing so you, you're not just selling a one of a kind thing. People are coming back for more and more because they know what yours is. Other shops that are just like kitsch ornaments, kitsch ornaments of cats. You know, you can you can have a niche as a vintage seller definitely, and then it's much easier to market because your Instagram is all about 50s stuff you can talk about cute little restaurants that you found and articles and then every now and again throw in your items that you found absolutely um let's see okay the the last thing was um amber had said who else is hating the new business pages on facebook why do i need to keep logging in and out just to update my own personal profile um, it's the same way for mine. If I click on any notifications coming in from my business page, it switches me over to my business profile. If I'm on my phone, sometimes I try to switch back to my personal profile and then it's like, oh, now you need to do two factor authentication to log back into your person. It's, it's been a pain. So a couple people yeah. have said that they don't have that on theirs. No, it's I think it's random people um, or those who have gotten the most recent updates. It's yeah, I have a horrible feeling it was something we clicked by mistake. So if you get an option to try the new thing, no. Thank you, Facebook, but no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a pain. All right, guys, I think that that is the end. So thanks for hanging out with us. If you're watching from YouTube, make sure that you click the description down below and join the E-Rank group. That way you can ask us questions every Thursday and every Wednesday. There is also a post pinned to the top of the group where you can add your questions in, in the event that you're not going to be able to make it live or your time zone doesn't permit. That way you can at least get your questions answered and watch our replay. But other than that, guys, have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you next week.